on the screen here, we're looking at the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. I talk about this newsletter all the time and how much I like it. Uh, and now is uh, the best time to check it out, right? Go over, get yourself some Tiger Dollars. You get up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchases. And you can use those to apply either to your current subscription or uh, if you want to try it out, I really recommend it. Uh, whether you use Tiger Dollars or not, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee. And, of course, Basil uh, hosts his show um, every morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Basil, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Jacob. How are you? <clears throat> oh, I'm doing I well. to have a frog in my throat. <clears throat> Excuse I me. I hear okay, that, right? I'm back. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> what are we uh, looking at today, Basil? Um, I'm, I'm curious to see what you have on the radar right now. So this is one of the things I look at. For, in the Chapman Wave, it's the core of the Chapman Wave is a very simple system, trying to identify the low bar of a particular move and then count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So there's seven peaks to the upside, but it's when you get an upgrade of a buy signal to a buy mode that you expect at least four higher peaks, that's a peak D. So that's the core to the, that's the, the essence of the Chapman wave. That was originally called the seven wave form because it takes seven waves to get to D. However, um, I did find after a short period that it did go higher, and that's how I got to the E, F, and G. There's never an H. So it sounds complicated, but all you're doing is you're following the letters. So look at this. The peak D, the fourth highest peak at 40,077 on the 20th of May, pull back sharply. We did have a very short-term, short position there. We, we got out of that. And now what we've done is we've gone to a leg D on the upside in the Dow. I'm showing on the left side, this is the daily chart of the Dow. In the middle is the weekly chart, monthly chart on the right. You can see the monthly chart has already got to a D and the weekly chart has got to an E and it's kind of gone sideways in a rectangle formation in the weekly that looks like a W, a w two U-shaped patterns, except that this one has taken six weeks and it hasn't gone very far from the low that was made at 38,000, and that was almost a round number low, 38,000.89 or something like that. It's amazing that it got there because, you know, I'm always looking at round numbers. And now you're in this rectangle formation. So it's disappointing because the, the Dow, to me, is really the, the, the U.S. economy. That, that's what we're looking at. The Dow 30 isn't the industrials. It was originally called the Dow Industrials. They still call it that. But it's not. It's the Dow 30, and it's a real fantastic mix of the U.S. economy. So this is it's kind of stalling. It's done very well up until now. And there's there are some techniques. So we've got the Tiger Dollars going on now. If anyone subscribes to my service, they can go to umpteen um, uh, webinars that I've given on all these different techniques. So here's, right. a, here's a technique that I talk about um, where the, I two, draw two very – uh, the distance between these channel channel lines is very small. So it's two trend lines. If they parallel, they make a channel, and it's a very tiny little channel. Then I call an inside track repellent zone. Look how the price keeps getting uh, repelled. And you can see I do the same thing on the upside. I'll go to that in a moment. But look at this. What's interesting is if we've stalled now today. There's no way by um, – by 4 o'clock, we can make a new recovery high into the 39,600 area. So that says we're probably making a peak D today. So it says be a little careful here because that last peak D, and the other thing is when we make a peak D, the fourth highest peak below the previous one, I'm, I don't like that. I like to go soaring through and go to a C and then a D much higher up. That's a powerful move. This just says, hmm. Got a little struggle, and you can see that that's coinciding with the weekly chart. Then I thought I'd, I'd show you something that to, to put these things together. So in Microsoft, <clears throat> there's a pattern that to me is very pertinent to all the things that I do. <clears throat> it's called a chap wave stalk leg formation. It's where, the, yeah, it is. It's like a leg that goes up. Then there's an oval. It has to be a long oval body. It can't be a rectangle. It has to look like an oval. It can't. Imagine that it's something else. Either looks like an oval or it's not, and it's long. And then there's a move to the upside. So that's the leg. That's the body. And now a stalk stands on one leg. And then the neck starts to move up. The neck doesn't have a height. It can because it'll change its format if it does have the height. But in this case, it went higher. And look what happened. Three days ago, it hit 468.15. This is Microsoft. This, 
for when we went along back on October the 31st, I think it was last year at 338, the idea was that it encompasses the Dow, the S&P, the QQ, the NDX 100, the XLK, which is the S&P tech sector, and the AIQ, which is the, um, it's like the, as if it was in the AI uh, tech sector. So look what happened. It went to this peak E, a little doji candle yesterday. And today, what did it do? It opened with a round number, 467, and it's down 6.65 at 4.59. So I'm going to be monitoring this very carefully because the idea of the weekly chart with this long oval and the neck says, when the neck turns down, it starts to make the beak. That's this little, you can see right here, that's the beak. That beak should pull back and test the arch high, in this case, uh, 433 to 431 is going to be the target, but we haven't yet got even a sell signal in a daily. So the daily will lead the weekly, but I'm watching this carefully because if it does pull back, it'll probably dra uh, drag the other indices down proportionately, not altogether, but it's a big component. And the other thing that I'm looking at is talking about this particular pattern. We have a stock core uh, mining. It's a silver stock. It had exactly the same pattern. Yes, look, he has the leg, he has this oval body, he has the neck, and it's in leg C. So I'm watching this closely because so far it's broken out very nicely. And if you look at the weekly chart, CDE is the symbol, it's gone right up until up to the uh, Chapman Wave inside wedge dash green uh, resistance area. So there are a number of, so that's in the gold area, and gold's had a very nice move, but you can see that. Um, if I show you this chart of gold, you'll see that in a sense, it's also kind of stalling in the weekly charts, make this U-shaped pattern. So I'm looking at different patterns. And uh, to go with the patterns, there's another one that I look at, which is, is the inside track repellent zone. Uh -huh. So in this case, you can see the weekly chart has this trend line. Look how many times this inside track has repelled the price. And here we are at a D in the weekly chart. It's only a leg A in the weekly chart, and that has a beautiful cup formation with a price time matched to the, to the right side of 41.74. That's the bar of January of February of 2022, and that was the high. I used that as the measure, and today we went to 41.83, just above it. So, um, and it's in a leg E in the daily. So, I'm watching this market very closely because. Uh, Together with the SMHs, there are a number of aspects that say the leadership of the tech sector could get a test this week if there is any failure at all in these big caps. So the SMH has made an all-time semiconductor event e ETF, went to 279.57 on the 20th of uh, June, pulled back, made a cup formation, and is struggling to get back to that level but it has had a very nice move back, but I'm going to be watching to see if the semis, which usually lead us up and lead us down, if they make any change in trends. So I'm just on watch right now. We've built up a cash position to take advantage of any pullback. But in the meantime, the technicals are still good. I'm watching it closely. Basil, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Thank you, Jacob. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back.